Note, anytime you are recording, you are always recording cross-level. First, identify your starting point. Once the starting point is determined, mark both the tie and the ground. This action has several benefits, including curves can be recorded, then worked later. With a marked tie, the distance wheel encoder can be checked for proper operation, and marking a starting location allows for multiple recordings. Marking the ground can also serve as your reference should your tie mark get erased by a passing locomotive or on-track equipment. On the first toolbar, select F2 to turn on the surface projector light. Select F3 to turn on the liner projector light. Check the reference and number of buggies. These will be displayed on the first screen. In order to change reference, select F4 on the first toolbar, then select F1. F4 on the first toolbar also allows you to check auto or center line. This is done by selecting F4 on the first toolbar, then select F3. Then check the number of buggies deployed. To change the number of buggies, go to the third toolbar and press F1. Screen now allows operator to change the number of buggies by pressing the plus or minus key. To return to the main toolbar, press Enter or Escape. Now move the machine behind the marked tie and pull back to mark. This will set the reference wheels in place. Machine is now set up to record both the surface and the line. You can bring up the expanded track view by pressing the magnifying glass button on the right-hand keypad, then toggle to the second toolbar set. Press F1 to put machine into record mode. Press F1 again to put machine into forward record mode. F2 is for recording in reverse direction. The recorder icon will appear and the reels of the icon will begin to rotate when the projector beam begins hunting successfully. Machine is now ready to move and start recording. Best results are achieved when recording starts at least 120 feet before the intended start of work location and 120 feet past the intended work. As the machine is moved, measured values for the track are recorded. To end a record, press F1, then the Enter key. The machine will give the operator an option to name the record and add any comments or notes. Pressing Enter saves all changes. Escape will also save the record. A best fit is then automatically performed for all recorded data according to default values. To view the complete recording, hit F5 for an expanded view. After pre-recording a given distance of track, up to 12,000 feet allowed at this time, return to the point where recording was started. Surface or lift and cross level are now set. The machine is now ready to work. If any parameters are to be changed, go to the change control panels found in the first expanded track view toolbar set. F4 will modify the line, F3 will modify cross level, and F1 will modify the lift. F2 will modify predicted lining throws. If changing parameters, they must be done in the above order. First, modify the line, then the cross level, and last would be modifying the lift. To modify lift graph, start by pressing F1. Use right hand keypad corporal keys to move to control point to be modified. Use the up arrow key to increase or down arrow to decrease the lift amount. Use the corporal key to move to next point. You can then adjust lift amount at this point. Once lift is set, press Enter. Lift is now saved. Use same procedure for F2 throws, F3 cross level, and F4 line. If the operator wants to record surface only, all steps would be the same except turning on the lights. On the first toolbar, operator would only select F2 to turn on the surface projector lights. F3 would not be selected.